So there's a dirty little secret about AI coding agents that none of the hype wants to admit. So while everyone's selling you on autonomous AI developers that code while you sleep, the reality is absolutely totally opposite. What if I told you that Google just confirmed that unambiguous separation between trusted and untrusted input is not possible in AI agents? So what if these autonomous agents are actually digital slaves that constantly that need constant babysitting and researchers from IBM, Google, and Microsoft just proved that once an LLM agent has ingested untruth input, it must be constrained so that it's impossible for that input to trigger any consequence, consequential actions. What does it mean for the only successful AI generated software projects that require more human micromanagement than just hiring a junior, junior developer? So today I'm gonna to expose some of the brutal truth about AI background agents and why security nightmare makes them unusable for the, real, for the rest of real businesses. Now let's dive into some of this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years of software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So AI agent hype machine has been running at an all-time full throttle, and I'm sure everybody's heard that 2025 is the year of the AI agent, and it's been promising autonomous coding assistants that work in the background while you focus on strategy. But new research from Google, IBM, and Microsoft reveal that AI agents face fundamental security vulnerabilities that makes them unsuitable for production environments. So after analyzing the only documented case of a full AI generated application in the latest security frameworks, the reality is pretty uh, surprising. So let's break down the brutal truths about AI background agents that the tech industry doesn't really want you to dive into and that the hype doesn't want to admit. Let's dive into some of this. So I want to start off talking about some uh, report that was released by Google about Gemini 2.5. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here now. Now, rather than having us uh, dig through this entire report, I'm actually working with a couple of other reports that you, that assimilated this one as well as a couple of others and and uh, followed up on what these reports actually were trying to give to us. So in this report, they were actually using this to try to play a Pokemon game uh, using uh, Gemini 2.5 Flash, right? And they actually bounced back and forth between 2.5 flash and pro one of the things that they noted here that was a huge problem was that hallucination would poison the context so to reduce the size of the context and remain focused the model would update a scratch pad of goals however if a hallucination like the above t example made it to the goal list the model would become fixated on achieving impossible or irrelevant goals the google team called this context poisoning and it led to his favorite strategy right and context poisoning can also lead to strategies like the blackout strategy and causing all pokemon in the party to fail faint, blacking out and teleporting to the nearest Pokemon Center and losing half their money. I'm not going into a lot of the Pokemon game here, but just kind of wanted to talk about what context poisoning and how this hit. The next is that the model would panic. Stressful in-game situation would cause Gemini to hyper-focus on needing to solve the stressful problem, which led to worse gameplay. In some cases, the model completely forgot to use its Pathfinder tool. Quote, this behavior has occurred in enough separate instances that the members of the Twitch chat have actively noticed when it's occurring. So these were some of the first things that this one did when they were using it as a test to play a Pokemon game. Now, Simon Willison, whose uh, stuff we've been following for quite a while, has done numerous different researches. And, and the one that I really wanted to go into was this one here, right? So he's talking a lot about design patterns for securing LLM agents against prompt injections. Prompt injections are a very serious problem, uh, especially when using uh, uh, the AI agents, right? And he talks about a lot of the different, uh, and he goes into a pretty in-depth read here. And so if you don't follow along with Simon Wilson, you definitely should if you're interested in some of this. But ultimately, I want to just kind of read his closing thoughts here. He says, I've been writing about prompt injections for nearly three years now. Now, he's not kidding. There's 106 posts here on prompt that uh, cover prompt injection over the last three years. But I've never had the patience to try and produce a formal paper on the subject. It's a huge relief to see papers on this quality start to emerge. And that's this paper that he's referring to, right, is on the, what happens in prompt injections. Prompt injection remains the biggest challenge to responsibly deploying the kind of agenic system that everyone is so excited to build. The more attention this family of problems gets the, uh, from the research community, the better. Now, I'm going to kind of dig into a little bit more and give you some of my breakdown and analysis of these, some of these because we, I saw a lot of problems as I went through. Now, I actually, I mean, this paper 
page here, I think was 65 pages. I read a good chunk of it, but I also did use an AI to help me curate some of the information here. So while LLMs can complete complex coding tasks with sufficient context and algorithmic supervision, the current hype around agentic codings as a hands-off solution is totally misplaced, as these models required intense management and context curation from skilled engineers for valuable results. And that's one of the things that we saw over and over again uh, from, from these papers, right? Is I saw this take again and again. Now, Google's new AI agent security framework admits that unambiguous separation between trusted and untrusted input is not possible, meaning that every AI agent is fundamentally vulnerable to manipulation. So this joint research paper from IBM, Google, and Microsoft states that once an LLM agent has ingested untrusted input, it must be constrained so that it's impossible for an input to trigger any consequential actions. This creates what researchers call the fundamental tension where increased agent autonomy and power, which drives utility, correlate directly with the increased risk. What this means is, as the risk goes up, it's going to require more and more human intervention. The two primary security risks are rogue actions, which means unintended harmful behaviors, and sensitive data disclosure, which means unauthorized re uh, revelations of private information. So let's take another example. Let's say you have this connected to your database, and you're supposed to be having it read your emails. A, a sensitive data disclosure would be if it took sensitive data from the database and included it into an email because the rogue action, an unintended harmful behavior, asked it to do so, right? Both would be unavoidable with current AI architectures, meaning this will happen. Google's own research concludes that general purpose agents cannot provide meaningful and reliable safety guarantees with today's current technology. So everybody out there who's saying that AI is a sentient being and super uh, safe, try again, right? Now, um, new research identifies six specific design patterns needed to protect AI agents from prompt injection attacks, but each pattern severely limits agent capabilities. And that's kind of what this goes into. Google admits that memory can become a vector for persistent attacks, where malicious data containing a prompt injection is processed and stored and could influence the agent's behavior in future and unrelated interactions. So what that means is if you've given some input over here, and let's say you've given some data that you need to match together, and there's some of this data in it that could be sensitive for another attack vector, and if another question comes in, if those two memory contexts have access to each other, then you the LLM does not is not able to distinguish safely between these. So the research also revealed that it would have been impossible to complete the test by relying just on tool calling, right? And that's one of the current foundation of current agentic hype, right? Is that it can follow these tools. And so you'll see all the time people be like, oh, I did this thing and I employed this agent and it made me $100,000. Look, guys, if you fall for that, you may as well also send a check to the Prince of Egypt for because, you know, he, he's going to help you win a million dollars, right? Google's new security framework requires well-defined human controllers. That's one of the biggest things. Agent powers must have limitations and agent actions and plannings must be observable. That's what they're saying. And so... Can an agent go off and do some period of work and then bring it back to a human for approval? Yes. Can an AI agent replace a developer by going and running code all night long and coming back and solving all of your problems overnight? Absolutely not. Google's own research provides that secure agent deployment requires so much human oversight that traditional development sometimes becomes more efficient and frequently much more. So model overfitting occurs when models memorize training data rather than learning to generalize, generalize from a trend. And this is a critical problem in AI agents training that gets worse as data sets include more AI generated contact. When the number of parameters in the same it is the same or as or greater than the number of observations that a model can perfectly predict the training data simply by memorizing it. So how does AI agents or excuse me, how does LLMs learn to do math problems? They've literally memorized every single possible variation of it. And that's how they start to do it. You notice that in the past, it used to be that, uh, you know, you could trick up um, a model by getting it to count the number of R's and strawberries. Well, now they have whole entire trained vectors for the number of characters in a word just to be able to avoid this. This is a classic example of where they're trying to beat the tests, right? Now, model collapse is another phenomenon that we have, and it's causing a quality death spiral. Model collapse is a phenomenon where machine learning models gradually degrade due to errors coming from uncurated training on the outputs of another 
model. Let me give you another analogy. If you have a Xerox or a copy, like you put a piece of paper into a copy machine and you have it take the copy out and then you take that copy and you copy it and you take that copy out and you copy it again, by the 12th time, it's almost unlegible. This is actually what's happening with model collapse, right? We're seeing that happen over and over again and the implications are very severe. AI agents may become increasingly conservative, producing safe but uninnovative code that lacks a creative solution that human developers provide. Because meaning they've, they've sanitized that data so much that it only knows this certain set of training data. And it really just becomes a degenerative process. So under such tight controls, even junior human software developers that write code, writing code would succeed higher than the tasks of these AI agents. Successful AI agents implementing uh, implementations require senior developers who understand architecture, design patterns, and debugging, the exact expertise that companies hope to replace. The research concludes that AI agents are the only truly impressive in the hands of exceptional software developers, not the cost-saving automation promised. So. This is a quote from the Microsoft, or from the Google report. Continue to ex continue expecting mediocre results from the mediocre people feeding LLMs mediocre content. AI agents and that's the end of the quote. AI agents amplify existing capability gaps rather than bridge them. The technology amplifies both excellence and incompetence, meaning organizations need better human expertise, not less. So AI agents deployment required substantial, and this is another quote from the report, substantial infrastructure investment. API costs, compute resources, monitoring systems, and specialized tooling that, and that's the end of the quote, but that often exceeds the traditional developer cost. Processing requirements mean that even simple applications require days to stream all the API calls with associated costs and complexity that makes smaller projects economically unviable. So if you're writing a set of REST services that you could have done in a couple of hours, but you're instead going to take 24 hours of tokenization and cost to run that just to prove that AI could do it, that's the point. The infrastructure overhead includes context storage, conversational management, output validation, error handling systems, and security monitoring that requires dedicated engineering effort. So organizations are discovering that supporting AI agents requires the same infrastructure and sophistication as supporting human developers, plus additional AI specific complications and security layers. A human understands they're not supposed to pull data out of the database and email it to somebody just because they got an email saying they should. The AI agents are totally gullible to that. Even Andre uh, Kar Karpisky uh, acknowledges the gullibility of these AI agents. The total cost of ownership for AI systems often exceeds traditional development when factored in the supervision time, infrastructure costs, security requirements, and output quality assurance. So after 25 years of building systems, I've learned that hidden infrastructure costs all, uh, often exceeds initial estimates and AI agents violate every principle of reliable, cost-efficient software development. Now, am I saying you shouldn't be using AI? Absolutely not. I think there's a lot of powerful tools. I think it's great for building boilerplate code. I think it's great for building out MVPs. It's great for throwing together a design. It does not belong in production yet. We are not there yet. And I think everybody who tries to do that to replace developers are running a major risk. Now, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Everybody come tell me all of your poor in your examples of where that AI code, that AI agent made you an application that's now making you $2 million a year. As soon as I get a real exact proof of that, I've had a couple people come in the comments and say stuff like that. And I replied back to be like, awesome, show me which application. I'm super interested in looking into it. No response. That's kind of what I'm talking about. But hit me up. I'd love to be proved wrong. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. So if you, you if your company needs help getting your systems integrated and uh, put together, reach out to us at startuphack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. 
From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals, whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.